solution. Now, this is it. the first thing that comes to students' minds when they see this question. They get scared because of the powers. Uh, you know, they are very large, 24 and 16. All right? But we can actually make it fine and better. Okay? True simplification. Now, watch and see the tricks I'm going to be using. So, I have y raised to the power 24 minus y raised to the power 16 is equals to 18. Now, I'm going to reduce this. And how will I now, or how am I going to work this to reduce it, to actually simplify it? Now, watch and see what I'm going to do. Recall from my other videos on indices, if I have x raised to power n, there is a law like this, raised to power m, it is automatically going to be x raised to power n times m. Okay, which we can write as x raised to power n m. Okay, so it could go both ways. Hence, what I'm going to do here is to reduce y raised to power 24. Now, see what I'm going to do. If I have y raised to power 24, do you know I can write it as y raised to power 8 times 3? And I can write it as y raised to power 8 or raised to power 3 using the knowledge. The same thing, I have y raised to power 16. I can write it as y raised to power 8 times 2 which will be y raised to power 8 or raised to power 2. Then I will now substitute. Okay? Instead of y raised to power 24, I will have y raised to power 8 all raised to power 3 minus y raised to power 8 all raised to power 2 is equals to 18. Okay? To make it better, I will use substitution to simplify it. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Let P be equals to Y raised to the power 8. Okay, I will simplify it further as this. You see, anywhere I see Y raised to the power 8, I replace it with P. So I'm going to have P or raised to the power 3 minus P or raised to the power 2. Is equals to 18. So P cube minus P squared is equals to 18. Now this is a polynomial. So I will now use the knowledge of polynomial. Yet from my other videos, I worked at questions on polynomials. Okay. You could you can search it and see uh, uh, the methods. All right. So I have P raised to the power 3 minus P raised to the power 2 minus 18 is equals to zero. So true trial and error, you can see that my P, P could be three. Okay, you can test several numbers, but you, you just, you know, consistency. When you work these questions over and over, you will be able to see um, um, the, the option, the right number to use quicker, all right? So P is equals to three. Now let me test it. 3 raised to the power 3 minus 3 raised to the power 2. This is 27 minus 8 minus uh, 9. Okay? 27 minus 9. Now, this is going to give us 18. So, one of our values is P is equal to 3. Now, let's check the other values and see whether they actually exist. That is, they are real or imaginary. All right? In doing this, since we know that one of the zeros of the polynomial is P, is 3, so P is equal to 3. Do you know that P minus 3 now is equal to 0? Okay, and this will be what? A factor. This is a factor of the polynomial, of the polynomial. Now, since it's a factor, it means that it is divisible. Since it is divisible, let's divide to see if we can get the other uh, factors. So, we divide. Now, I uh, here I have P minus 3. Now, this is P raised to power 3 minus P raised to power 2. Can I now put 0 P, okay, then minus 18. It is best you do it this way because it will be more convenient for you. So, the way to do it in the division is we will now pick P raised to power 3 divided by P, which is P squared. So it means that P squared, when I put it here, by the time I multiply by 
this p minus 3 it will actually give me something that can cancel out as this p squared times p is going to be p cubed then p squared times minus 3 is minus 3 p squared now the method of division of polynomial is you subtract subtracting this becomes 2 p squared then we'll bring down uh plus 0 p okay we we'll use the same method so what is it that when i multiply by p gives me p 2 p squared so i have plus what 2 p now once i multiply i am going to have 2 p squared then minus 6 p okay i will now subtract once i subtract i will get 6 p then i'll bring down my minus 18 so what can go now is um plus 6 okay 6 times p is 6 p then 6 times minus 3 is minus 18 all right when i subtract no remainder so it actually means that p minus 3 is a factor and 3 is a zero of it so since i've established that fact then let me have it this way now okay now once i rearrange this you will now see that p minus 3 is a factor and the other factor is a quadratic expression which is p squared plus 2p then plus 6 okay i'm settled with this but i need to look at what this is okay since it's quadratic by me looking at it it is not factorizable so let me test the values of p do they really exist in the real plane and this is how you need to test to see you must get your b squared and you must get your 4ac okay those are the things that you need to get to really know if the values of p exist or not all right now from the format of a quadratic equation this is p squared plus 2p plus 6 we have format of quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero now what this is uh in this case the unknowns are p and x so we don't have problem with that but the coefficient when you compare the coefficient my a is equals to one my b is equals to two then my c is equals to six okay so let me check it out now b squared b squared is the same thing as saying two squared which is equals to 4. Then 4ac is the same thing as saying 4 times 1 times 6, which is equals to 24. Now, if you check it out very well, you find out that b squared is actually far less than 4ac. And once you have uh, this conclusion, then the root... are not real and we don't need this okay so the only answer is p is equal to three so therefore is p is equal to three okay but recall what we are looking for is y but we said that let p be equals to y raised to power eight now in this case it means three is equals to y raised to power eight now, we are going to have y raised to power 8 is equals to 3. Just rearranging. For us to get the value of y is to raise this. Okay, raise y raised to power the inverse of the power. Okay, that is the method. 8. So, you can see that this cancels this. So, we have our y is actually equals to 3 raised to power 1 over 8. So, my y is actually the 8th root of three okay now you can test this you can go back and test uh the, the 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 answer which is y is equals to eight root of three and you find out that it is very correct so my final answer of course like i said is y is equals to the eighth root of three so this is the final answer okay so don't forget to subscribe for other interesting videos